we've looked at how we can identify characteristics and behaviors of rational functions by looking at the graph of that function. Now what we want to do is revisit some of those topics and see how we can find those same results just by investigating the function itself or by calculating those results. To start off, we know that rational functions are undefined for all values of x that result in division by zero. That means our starting point is to determine where our denominator would be equal to zero and identify restricted values. In this case, that would tell us that x cannot equal negative 4 or positive 3. The two results that we get by setting those factors in the denominator equal to 0 and solving. This means that our domain gets split up from being negative infinity to infinity to instead being negative infinity to negative 4, union negative 4 to 3, union 3 to infinity. So by setting the denominator equal to 0, we find those restricted values, and from there we can establish the domain of that rational function. But when a rational function is undefined, we've seen that there are two types of behaviors that we can encounter. We can either have a vertical asymptote or we can have a removable discontinuity. Or the simpler way to say that is a hole in the graph. So just to make up a rational function here, we could have a graph that looks like this. We know that the function we're looking at right now has two different two different restricted values. That could take the form of either a vertical asymptote or again this hole in the graph or that removable discontinuity. In order to determine what we have at each restricted value, we need to construct a simplified rational function. What that means is we just want to reduce the given expression. If it's not already in factored form, we need to factor it and then look for any factors that would cancel. In this case, x minus 3 over x minus 3 would cancel, leaving us with a new simplified or reduced function that just for ease of reference we'll call g of x. And that's going to be equal to negative 2x minus 2 all over negative x minus 4. Next what we'll do is check all of our restricted values against that reduced function and if the reduced function is still undefined at that point then we have a vertical asymptote. If the reduced function is defined at that point, so if the original function is undefined at that point but the reduced function is defined, then we have a removable discontinuity. Now we can take those two pieces that we've already established and determine in example 3 if our restricted values for f of x are vertical asymptotes or removable discontinuities. So we already found that for f of x, x cannot equal negative 4 or 3. Now we have our new function, g of x, which is just that reduced version of f of x. We can take that new denominator, set it equal to zero, 
which gives us a single restricted value that x cannot equal negative 4. Now we just compare those results. Since both the original function and the simplified function are both undefined at negative 4, we know that x equals negative 4 is a vertical asymptote. Since the original function is undefined at 3, but the reduced function is defined there, that's no longer a restricted value, then x equals 3 is a removable discontinuity. Our goal is going to be to determine these points and classify them without looking at the graph of the function. But just for reference to reinforce what it is that we found here, we've determined that the graph of the original function, f of x, has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4 and has a hole in the graph or removable discontinuity at x equals 3. So all this work allows us to identify vertical asymptotes and removable discontinuities, separate those two different kinds of restricted values. There are also methods for calculating or pulling out from a function where horizontal asymptotes exist, if they exist. But that's a topic that we're going to save for business calculus for those of you who move on to that course as well.